Hi guys, welcome back to Sister Nayes Corner. Guys, it was so good today in church. A lot of testimonies from Zambia, Africa. My pastor just got back from a conference there. He called the King's Conference, something like that, through Overland Mission. Came back with her daughter that has been serving for seven months in, Overland, in Zambia through Overland Mission. I'll just take you into the service so you can watch and hear the young lady and the dad. Hope you're having an amazing day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, let's go into the service, okay? Do like, so subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up for my videos. If you're no subscriber, thank you so much. Let's go into the church. One of which was just to celebrate and just to see this miraculous event unfold. So we have a couple of pictures that I'm just going to show you real quick so you can see some of these things. These are all of the kings that were represented there. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even know how many over, uh, I think around a hundred there. And so I want you to understand that one of the kings here, for instance, uh, represents about... 13 million people. You see, we're talking about people groups and they cross over national lines. So some of them can be in different nations. So, you know, this is a kind of a, a bloodline that is happening. It's not just politicians, it is kings and chiefs. And see, so they're over people groups. And this is the way Africa thinks. And so what you see represented there is not just a small amount of people. What you see represented there is millions of people in fact, uh, a majority of the portion of Africa could be touched or open the doors to be reached by these relationships. Amen? Amen. So you can also see uh, one, the, the man right there in the center with, uh, next to the guy with the red, who looks like a, wise, like a wise man or a king from the nativity. You know what I'm saying? The guy in the red. Next to him on the right, that's the president of Zambia. And next, there he, there he is right there without anything, uh, no, no hat on there. That's the president. Could you go back to that one? Go back there. There's a man right next to the president who has, is a Native American chief. You see him? He is the grand chief of the nation of Cree, the Cree people, which is north of Quebec. And he sits uh, on the UN Council for the voice of the First Nations people over all of North America. And a major, major voice, a major voice. And what's really neat is all the kings, you know, when you see them, it's almost intimidating. You don't even know, they have, they have this protocol, you don't know how to approach them, you don't. But when they see this Native American chief, they love it. In fact, they'll all get pictures with him. They think he's like a celebrity. And it's just so awesome. And it's funny too, because he's from uh, Quebec and he, talks really American, but when he gets, actually American, that's actually English. American is a dialect. But when he gets around them, he suddenly puts on this like uh, chief voice, like how, you know, when he talks real slow. And like, we were just talking a minute. Anyway, his name is Matthew Kuhncom, and uh, the man next to him is Philip and Sharon Smithhurst, who are uh, if the Bible, I believe that the Bible was being written, he, he might be mentioned. He's just one of those guys. He's, he's really, really doing it. You probably have never heard of him, but he will be with us, by the way, in January. And so he's going to be with us and in, in, in ministering. But anyways, it's just massive. Let me show you one other picture. So this is the, these are kings right here. And these, these are chaplains. These are chaplains that have been raised up. And the, the idea behind this ministry is they raise up a chaplain who is placed with a chief. So a chief opens up a village or a territory and then they raise up, they disciple these, these chaplains and then they are placed alongside of these chiefs to give them spiritual guidance, in essence, to win them to the Lord, which opens up the village to be one to the Lord. It's amazing. So what you see there is not just a when you look at one person, that's not just one individual. That represents an entire village. Uh, it's pretty, pretty awesome. And so that is, that's the just one of the strategies that they're employing right now. But this is one of the things that was celebrated. 
And so also, I, uh, uh, one of the benefits of being there was I was able to see all of the missionaries and I brought home one with me. Yes, sir. Who also is dating some South African Yes! Girl, which we're pretty excited about. So I had to go check that out as well, you know. Still a dad after all. But uh, I was going to have her. Would you come and yes. greet the yes. for a couple of minutes? Would you give it up for my dearest Hannah and Hannah? This house is so missed when I'm gone. Um, it's so dear to my heart, and as you can see, there's just massive things happening over in Zambia. It's been a crazy, um, I think about seven months that I've been gone. Yeah. Just an adventure with the Lord, and um, yeah, this is just, it's so cool to be a part of something like this. Uh, when we were, like a week ago, Sunday morning a week ago, we were at church on Rapid 14, and uh, which is our base in Zambia and we're sitting I'm sitting like this far away from kings and chiefs from all over Africa it was just like mind-blowing you're like pinch me in my dream <laughs> um, but yeah the Lord is doing something so huge um, and I'm so excited to come back here and be a part of it here because um, I know the Lord's doing something huge here as well um, do you want me to share now okay <laughs> Um, well, I was just going to share a few minutes um, about some testimonies, and I know you guys have been talking about the Holy Spirit the last few weeks, um, which is a vital part of what we do over um, when we go into remote villages and tribes. Um, having the Holy Spirit with you is vital. Um, I can't imagine. There's so many times that I'm in a conversation with someone or as a team, we're ministering to a group of, of drunk guys at a bar, or we're um, you know, in the middle of Zambia, and um, we're trying to kind of, trying to argue our side, but what, what makes the difference is when we can demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. So um, I wanted to read um, out of Ephesians 6, just a few verses. Um, we all know this is the armor of God. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm going to start in verse 10, and I'm just going to kind of skip down a little bit. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, again, he says, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand firm. And then he goes on, he says, um, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, um, the shield of faith, helmet of salvation. And then he says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit. And then it says, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for the saints, and also for me that words may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to boldly proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Amen. So we all know, like, we put on the armor of God, we're saved, we know we're saved, we're new creations, we, we know the gospel, we, we have truth, we have peace, we have all of the armor of God on, you know, and I think a lot of Christians kind of stop there and they're like, I'm good. I have, nothing can harm me. I'm, I'm in the battle. Nothing's going to be able to touch me. And you're right. You, you're completely right. <laughs> you're, you're defended by the armor of God. Um, but then what is the difference when you have the sword of the spirit? And when you know how to use the sword of the spirit, you know how to wield the sword. It takes you from being just on defense to now you can you can be on offense and so um, I wanted to share a story there's so many stories I could tell <laughs> literally this is like my main message that I share with my team members when I take teams out 
is how important it is to have the Holy Spirit because it really does completely change the atmosphere and completely change the outcome of when you're ministering to someone who doesn't know the, who doesn't know the Lord. Um, but I wanted to share a story. I was just in England a few weeks ago. Um, we were doing some recruiting and some reconning in England. And if any of you have been there, you know it's quite cold to the gospel. <laughs> it's very, very unreached, actually. They consider themselves post-Christian. You know, they, they're, they don't know the gospel. They don't accept Christians at all. Um, we were, me and my um, co-workers, we were going to a church. We were in an Uber. <laughs> And our Uber driver, he was Muslim. And every time we get in an Uber or a taxi or we're just talking with someone, we want to share what we do and, oh, where are you coming from? We're coming from Zambia. Oh, how cool. What are you doing there? And we get to, you know, tell them what we do. And so then we get to talking. We have like a 40-something minute drive uh, with traffic. And um, this guy, he's telling me about, you know, his Muslim faith. And we were talking similarities between Christianity and Islam. And do you go to the mosque? Yes, but sometimes, you know, do you pray to Allah? Yeah, but I'm not really, really strict or religious about it. I'm like, oh, okay, so does Allah talk to you? He's like, no, but I talk to him and I know he listens or whatever. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> so then it kind of goes quiet for a minute. And I'm like, it's usually the time when I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, what do I need to say? What do I need to do to get through? Because this, you know, we can talk, and, and that's all we'll do. We'll just talk. And um, I felt the Holy Spirit say, he needs to see my power. And so I'm sitting there in the front seat, and I said, um, this is a weird question, but do you have knee pain in your left knee? And he was like, he turns to me, and he's like, what? <laughs> I said, I know, it's weird. Do you have knee pain in your left knee? He's like, yeah, I, I hurt my knee a couple days ago in the gym. I said, and he's like, his mouth is open, like shocked. <laughs> and he says, that's really weird. How did you know that? I said, I said, I said, the Lord talks to us. The Lord, God, the God of the Bible talks to us. When we talk to him, he speaks back. And he didn't just tell me you have knee pain just to kind of, Prove his power. He actually wants you to be healed. And so I said, "Can we pray for you?" And we we did. We prayed for him. His knee was healed right away. He's like sitting with his leg going, "How did you do that? Is this?" He's like, "Is this psychic? Are you psychic? Are you you know whatever?" I said, "No. We believe in the God of the Bible, and He wants to know you. He wants to um, He wants to know you more, and He wants to prove that He's real." And and we got to talking after that, but everything changed then when I. When the power of the Holy Spirit was demonstrated to him, his ears were open and he was listening to us. So that took us from being just on defense and, and putting on the armor of God to now we're on offense. And he's, he actually started going to a church that we were um, connected with in Manchester. And um, he said, wait till I call my mom and tell her I'm going to church. She's going to be... She's going to be amazed, you know? So it was really, really cool, yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to encourage you with that, and yeah, so excited to be home. Okay, guys, has been an awesome Sunday. I'm still trying to go now. We're gonna have to end this video right here, right now. Church is over, baptism of service is over. Let's go for lunch. Yes, they are 
trying to clear the parts the artisanal uh, let me show you yeah over there okay so thank you for watching okay i'll see you in my next video have a blessed sunday peace